Hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite movies. And today I'm going to be doing a movie review on Tampopo by Itami Juzo. And also it is nearly 6 p.m. and I haven't even had lunch, so you know what? It's lunchtime, baby. So this movie is released in the year 1985, the same year where tons of other movies came out. Ron, which I really love, Come and See, After Hours, Taipei Story, friggin' I don't know, just tons of classic films, Police Story, so 1985 is without a doubt uh, one of the greatest years in film in my opinion. <sighs> And Tampopo is one of the offerings that 1985 had. It is a movie, two hours long, and it is about food, especially ramen, which I'm eating right now. Now, essentially, this is kind of like a Western. I When I went to the movie, I thought it's going to be like a comedy or something, but no, it's kind of like a Western. A dude in a hat. Uh, let's say Japanese John Wayne came to a ramen shop to eat ramen and was kind of disappointed. So he and his buddy, uh, who is played by the one and only Watanabe Ken, uh, tried to help the main character Tampobo by renovating her ramen shop and improving on her ramen making skills. And man, very simple premise, but... This is an amazing film. It says a lot about food, and there aren't enough movies out there about food, and just about food. This movie is a love letter to food. The ramen, the spaghetti, the, the Chinese food, the pecking duck, the uh, sushi, everything in this film is just food, food, food. And I absolutely love it. But this movie isn't just about food. It is also about life and death, love, sex, relationships. And the movie explores that by doing something that, that's very interesting. That I've never seen any other film do. And that is, once every five to six scenes, the movie essentially distracts itself. You know, we have the main storyline where... Uh, we have Tom Popo and the two main characters, the two guys, trying to renovate the ramen restaurant. But, um... Ooh, I got a boiled egg here. But then once every five to six scenes, the movie distracts itself by suddenly, randomly cutting away to another character, like a passerby or something. And those scenes are also really interesting. Those are like short stories, but they're all really memorable and funny and witty. And uh, the first one that did that was essentially a bunch of businessmen, a bunch of senpais have lunch. And then we have a newcomer, a kohai, who is young and dumb and clumsy. They went to a restaurant and the menu is like in French and it's super sophisticated and none of the old people know how to read the menu. So one old guy said, ooh, um, I will have a salad and maybe I will try some uh, whatever this is and a beer. And then the other guy was like, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a salad and then beer. And then another guy was like, uh, same. But then this newcomer, read the menu and was like, mm, how about this champagne from 1989? Ooh, this is quell. Is that shaped like a sausage? Is it? Which is really, really funny. And their faces turn red, like literally out of embarrassment. And then of course you get the um, food sex scenes. Yes, even though the premise of this film seems really family friendly, this movie doesn't shy away from a bit of sex and violence. We have the man in the white suit played by one of the best actors Japan has to offer, Yakusho Koji, 
uh, as man in the white suit and he essentially orders food just to play with his lover <laughs> and one of the most iconic scenes is when he was sliding egg yolk from his mouth to his lover's mouth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth this is the type of shit gaspar no way wishes he could direct but at the same time it's really funny really quirky and uh kind of gross in a very fun way and just because it's gross doesn't mean it's bad filmmaking the way the director framed people the way it's edited it's very clean it's very innocent it's very simple and there's a certain naivety to the scenes in this film that made it so genuine it just came from a very very heartfelt place and i just really really love that oh god this is so hot so yeah this is a really fantastic film i guess another scene that <laughs> i find really funny was an old guy who can only eat soft things because he has a teeth problem he was eating ice cream and then a child came up to him and he had a sign on his chest saying i can't eat sweets because my mom doesn't let me eat them and then the old guy tried to tempt the child with ice cream that was one of my absolute favorites again there's just this na naivety there's this childishness to these scenes that made it so wildly imaginative especially that scene when they were like meeting a bunch of slums like poor people so to speak and even though they're very dirty and they wear very dirty, messy clothes, they're all experts when it comes to food. One of them made an omelet ice in like two, three minutes and secretly sneaked away from like a restaurant kitchen. Man, I wish I could do that. <laughs> I miss omelet ice. It's been a while since I've had one really. And so much more again with the very simple premise the film focuses a lot on the specifics like uh, the broth of the ramen the texture of the noodles the atmosphere and the the decoration of the restaurant itself and i really love movies that do that 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 put a very heavy focus on a very specific topic and just go all the way in and it has a very satisfying ending <sighs> So yeah, this movie is amazing. I expected it to be great, and it turned out to be really, really great. And uh, oh, also the the opening scene where the guy was like breaking the fourth wall and saying, "Hey, are you eating when you're watching this movie right now?" That was really good. I wish more movies do that <laughs> in the beginning, just like a fake. You know how cinemas do this, like, "Oh, don't talk to your phone. Don't you know? Don't text." This is in the movie itself, in 1985. So, Itami Juzo, Tampopo, it's a classic. So yeah, I'm giving Tampopo a strong 9 out of 10. So, have you watched Tampopo? Comments below, let me know. Subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching.